get out of this castle. Until you find a princess who really wants to marry you, then you'll be allowed to come back here. Why could you treat me like that? What did the prince do to make the king angry like that? Let's follow Woa Fairy Tales to come back and see what happened. That prince named Beavis, he was so arrogant that he despised everyone around him. Therefore, although being of an age to get married, he still couldn't find anyone who was suitable for him. Huh? Father King! Didn't I tell you that there would be an important meeting today? Why did you come here so late? Because I couldn't find any suitable pair of shoes. I had to order the servant to make a new one, so it took a little bit longer. Hope for your understanding with this disrespectful action. Oh, that's alright. Maybe the prince wanted to prepare carefully for this meeting. Let me introduce. <laughs> this is the princess of the neighbor kingdom, who will get married with you. Hi, prince. I'm Anna. You look more beautiful than the girl that I have met. Do you know how to draw or to play chess? I... I can't do both of them. I just love floral arrangement. <laughs> floral arrangement? Isn't that a work of a servant? You're a princess. Why do you have to do that? Huh? Hope that you emissary and princess will come back on another day. If there's nothing more to do here, can I get back to the castle? Get out of this castle! Until you find a princess who really wants to marry you, then you'll be allowed to come back here! Then Prince Beavis had to wander around from kingdom to kingdom. However, his notoriety was known well that not a single huh? princess wanted hmm. to be his wife. This is the fifth kingdom. If everything goes on like this, I won't be able to come back for the rest of my life. Are you looking for a princess to get married? How did you know it? Who are you? It doesn't matter who am I. What you should really care is to find a princess who will be willing to marry you. Really? Where is she? She's now living in the golden castle deep inside the jungle ahead. There's a witch who is weaving the magic strands to wrap around a door to detain her. All you will need to do is to strike the strands off, the door will be opened, and she will agree to marry you. Just as simple as that? Is there anything else? When you enter that castle, you will not be allowed to touch anything, or the greed will turn you into stone. Yes, I knew it. Beavis followed the instructions of the young girl, and finally he reached the golden castle hmm. deep inside the old forest. Indeed, there are so many rare precious things here. No wonder hmm. that those normal people couldn't hold their greed. But now with me, the princess is the most important thing. Hmm. Prince Beavis went straight to the room, huh? which was supposed to be detained the poor princess. The ugly witch dared to detain my fiancé. I will teach you a lesson. Then the prince rushed there to cut off all the strands, which were wrapped around huh? the door. Oh no! What are you doing? Huh? Thank you, foolish prince. Now this beautiful face will forever be mine. <laughs> huh? <gasps> What's happening? Isn't that this room is detaining a princess? I'm that princess, and you've just ruined my life. <laughs> Come on. Maybe you were so beautiful when you were young, but now you're too old to be a princess. I'm just 17 years old. <laughs> oh, really? So what happened that made you like this? Seventeen years ago, when my father got lost in a hunting trip, a witch promised that she would bring him back, but on one condition. 
he would have to exchange the body and the face of his little princess for her when she got 15. At that time, my father had no daughter, so he accepted it without hesitation. But he never expected that my mother was pregnant with me. He immediately begged the fairies for help, and fortunately, a kind fairy replied his prayer. In the world of fairy and witch, there are some rules that will never be broken. I won't be able to help you lift the spell immediately. We can just wait for the determination of the princess. Because she didn't mention about the hair, so she will be able to keep it. Just plant this magic seed inside a golden castle. And use her hair to weave the magic strands, which will help her stay away from the dark magic. The gold stone will turn anyone into stone when they step inside with the greed. Until the magic fruit is ripe, then the princess can eat that fruit, everything will come back to her. I was supposed to get my beauty back. No one will allow to marry a saboteur like you. Isn't that a small fruit? I will go and take it back for you. Is that okay? Take it back? You can do it? I, Prince Beavis, swear to this sword. I will take the magic fruit back to you by all means. Okay, just go to the Black Swamp and bring it here. Black? Black Swamp? You've been afraid already. I... I will never be afraid. Just go! Before reaching there, Beavis prepared a big loaf of meat and a kind of leaf that he picked along the road. <laughs> what are you doing? What was that loaf of meat for? I heard people say that there was a ferocious monster here. These things will help us. Right at the moment, when they reached the swamp, Beavis threw the prepared meat towards the monster. Being hungry for so long, right after seeing the meat, it immediately rushed there to devour the meat. After a while, it suddenly collapsed. What's wrong with it? That leaf will make them sleep for a while, but not long. We need to hurry up. I never expected that a prince like you knew these things. If you stay abroad long enough, you will be able to learn it by yourself. Hmm. Seeing the witch inside the house, Beavis hmm. came up with an idea. <laughs> hmm? Suspecting that there was an intruder, the witch hurriedly ran out without noticing that there had also been a straw below, so she stumbled. Just waiting for that, Beavis quickly ran there and wrapped her up so tight by the magic strands. Ayunoni finally took the magic fruit, then she bit it. Immediately, her face was back like before. <laughs> Thank you so much! This is the first time when anyone truly thanked Beavis. He never thought that he could be happy like this when doing a good thing. The monster finally woke up and it could see its master was in danger. It immediately attacked the two people. Quickly! Run away! How about you? For my whole life, I haven't been able to do anything good to others. Helping you is the most meaningful thing I have ever done. With me, that's enough. Help me tell my father what I did. He will be proud of me. Hearing so, the princess had no other choice but to run away leaving the prince alone to fight against the ferocious monster. The prince was no match for the monster. It immediately knocked him out. 
right at the most dangerous moment, there was a strand coming from nowhere to rope around hmm. its neck. It turned out that Ayonani hmm? didn't go anywhere. Hmm. She just hid in a corner to weave some more magic strands. She threw one end of the strand towards Beavis. Huh? Getting the point, he caught it and quickly ran around the monster. Not for so long, the strand wrapped around its legs. The monster faltered to the ground. Beavis tightened the strand and the monster couldn't move. The two quickly got back to the place of Ayunani's parents to unite with her family. While Beavis intended to leave, Ayunani stopped him. After a long journey, they had different looks at each other and they gradually fell in love. After that, a grand wedding was held and they lived happily together forever after. Get me out of here! If I can get out, I will teach you all a lesson! Once upon a time, in the east of the faraway fairy forest, there lived a beautiful mermaid princess named Aura. She was the one who ruled this land and maintained the peace there. Not only was she enthusiastic, getting along with all creatures, but she was also kind, always ready to help people. In particular, Aura also possessed a life hair. Her hair symbolized her life and ability to heal all wounds when she sang sweet songs. However, she must not cut her hair or use her powers too much. The more times she used them, the weaker Aura was. Moreover, the older she got, the more curious Aura became. She was curious about everything, especially the western part of the distant fairy forest, where the border was the fairy river. However, because of old rumors that the west was the place where the fierce Birdman tribe lived, mermaids like her were afraid and did not dare to cross the river. However, in Aura's mind, she was still curious and wanted to learn about that western land. During a visit to the border area, Aura suddenly saw a birdman helping small sea creatures. It isn't written in the book that the people of the birdman tribe are very cruel, but that man takes care of the little creatures around him so carefully. However, Aura was too focused on observing the young man to accidentally cross the border, making the alarm raised. There's an intruder! Fortunately, while Aura was panicking, the Birdman rushed to rescue her from the patrols of others. Aura was just saved by the young man when the patrol team arrived and frantically searched for her. Well, obviously I heard the alarm, but was it wrong? This guy is probably just hanging around. I'll definitely catch that guy. Waiting for the patrol to leave, the young man breathed a sigh of relief and disarmed the magic circle for Aura. Thank you for helping me out of trouble. May I ask your name? I am Dawn, Prince of the Western Forest and the flightless waste bird of the Birdman tribe. But don't be afraid. I will not harm you because I always wanted to live peacefully with the people of the East. Feeling that Dawn was a good person, Aura was actively helping Dawn to heal his wings. To thank you, I will use my magic to make your wings fly like everyone else's. Even though he didn't understand what Aura's words were, huh? Dawn let her try. Sure enough, when her singing was heard, her hair radiated a magical oh. light and healed Dawn's <laughs> wings. Thank you for giving me this miracle. If you don't mind, can I become your friend? Huh? Of course! I'm happy with this offer! After that, Dawn and Aura became close friends and gradually fell in love with each other. They shared many things together, clearing the misunderstandings between the two tribes from many years ago. I have also heard that the East has many very scary creatures, but when I and some friends come into contact, everyone is very nice. Therefore, we hope that the two sides will soon live together peacefully. 
That's great! Hmm. Hope we can do it soon! However, that made Theo, the fierce birdman who always wanted to dominate the East, very angry and sought to split this relationship. One day, as usual, Oro was preparing to go to the rendezvous when Theo brought his minions to surround the border area. I myself often see her sneaking, went to the west and watching Prince Dawn, so the missing prince must have something to do with her. Dawn is missing, but why? Stop pretending. You are the one who kidnapped the prince, so we must send our troops to the east to find him. Can you provide proof that Dawn's disappearance is because of me? What you just said is one-sided. Huh. Only you are an outsider and who knows the conspiracy of the East when you try to approach the Prince. Maybe the old rumors are true. You mermaids are very cunning and scary. You are not allowed to say about people in the East like that. I have an idea. In three days, I will surely find Don and bring him back safely. But how can we believe that? Unless you hand over the trident, the symbol of the head of the East, to us. I will accept this offer. Aura hesitated to look at the trident. If she had to give this treasure to anyone, it would be to give the lives of all the people of the East into his hands. Huh? Princess, we believe you can find Dawn and bring peace between the two tribes. If anything goes wrong, we have no regrets, because you and Dawn have always helped us. We're willing to make sacrifices for the two of you. Thank everyone for trusting me. I will definitely be back in three days. After listening to everyone's encouragement, Aura agreed to give the trident to Theo. If I don't come back after three days, the trident will be yours. Ha! Huh. Okay. I hope to hear the good news from you. Then Aura began her journey to find Dawn, but she still had no clue. This is the last place Don and I used to go to, but there's still no trace of him. Shouldn't he encounter something bad? Thank God, the princess is here. I know, where's the prince? Aura heard the sound and hurried to find it. Huh? She found a small bird locked in a huh? cage nearby. <laughs> Little bird, do you know where Don is? But why, why are you so sick? Turns out, it was the little bird that had witnessed Theo kidnap Dawn while he was on his way to meet Aura. However, when the bird was going to report the news, Theo knew that and locked the bird in a small cage. The bird had not eaten or drunk for a few days, so his body was very weak. Because Aura wanted to quickly save Dawn and the people on both sides of the conflict, she immediately used the magic of her hair to save the little bird. <laughs> However, after saving the bird's small life, Aura's health gradually weakened a lot. Thank you, Princess, for saving my life. The prince was imprisoned by Theo in a thousand-year-old tree. We just need to go down the river to reach it. Thank you, little bird. Aura tried to use her little strength left and swam to the old tree, as the little bird said. After one day and one night, she finally arrived. Huh? But the space inside was very dark, and there was no way to go. I need light to be able to see things clearly. But how do I get light? That's right, it's my hair! When I sing, my hair will shine! Thinking that, and Aura sang, causing her hair to shine, leading her to a small gate nearby. Huh? Through the gate, she entered a small cave, where Dawn was being guarded by Theo's huh? minions. Let me go! I can't let a man like Theo, who craves power, hurt everyone to take over both the East and the West. Don't be so stubborn. The little people in the East are not worthy of our position. They can only become cowardly slaves. Huh? <laughs> ah! huh? What? Ah! Huh? Don is right! Everyone has the right to be free, and no one is a slave to anyone! Ha <laughs> ha
Aura! Aura quickly swam to Dawn to rescue him. Huh? However, a stream of magic <laughs> shot toward Aura and injured her. <laughs> huh, I didn't expect Aura to come here to save you. But rest assured, I will eliminate both of you right here and make both the East and the West my slaves. Huh? I won't let you hurt anyone! Dawn was angry and flew close to Theo to fight. However, when he was about to win, Aura was captured by Theo's minions. Prince, please stop right away or I will hurt the little princess. Aura! Ah! Dawn! Aura struggled to escape and successfully retrieved Dawn's sword, but a minion hastily stopped her. At that time, the princess decided to cut her hair and quickly threw the sword at Dawn. Taking the opportunity, Dawn hastily used the power of the sword to defeat Theo. Theo collapsed and turned into a bird to flee with his minions. Aura! <coughs> Are you okay? Your body is getting cold. It's because I cut my life hair. So now, my health is getting weaker. <laughs> then, quickly, use the rest of your hair to restore your health. No! Huh? You are also hurt a lot. I can't let you die for the sake of saving myself. Then I agree to go with you, to be by your side forever. <laughs> However, when tears of their love fell on Aura's huh? hair, a flash of light burst from the water and restored the couple's health. Turns out, it was the <laughs> unconditional sacrifice of two people's love that overcame death and gave them a chance to be together again. Finally, after many hardships, love huh? is forever immortal and conquers death. And then, we are together! Aura and Dawn looked at each other happily, and then returned to the magical river. Finally, under everyone's blessing, Aura and Dawn got married and helped the two <laughs> tribes live in peace and prosperity forever. Is the goddess's hair turning into a rainbow? What happened? Let's follow Wola Fairy Tales with today's story. Once upon a time in the prosperous ancient land of Egypt, everyone worshipped the goddess of the Great Nile. Because she was the one giving refreshing water, abundant harvest, and bringing sufficient life to the people. <laughs> she had a really satisfying life when she gave birth to a gorgeous daughter with golden hair. The goddess was really happy and she loved her so much. However, happiness couldn't last long when one day, she was lured out by the god of the seas. He polluted the water in an area, forcing her out to save the people. and took that opportunity to kidnap her daughter <laughs> and leave the little girl alone on the edge of the woods. That poor little princess left behind was still naive, didn't know what was happening. Fortunately, she was taken home by a widow with no children. Poor girl, who left you in the middle of the forest like this? If they don't need you then, from now on, you will be with me. I will call you Anuki. When losing her child, the goddess of Nile was depressed. She became weaker and weaker. The god of disease took that chance to spread disease everywhere. The crops were all withered and the water was heavily polluted. The polluted Nile... May the weak goddess of the Nile became even weaker. She was not strong enough to fight the deceased god anymore. He took that opportunity to take over the world, raging everywhere, causing people to live in misery. Talking about the daughter of the Nile goddess, she was raised by a widow. At an early age, she had been extraordinary. Her adoptive mother had a maid in the palace, so she had used to bring her books. Anuki had been like super passionate about books since childhood. Strangely, no one had ever taught her, but she could still had read and understood those pages. At that time, the people of Egypt were extremely miserable because of the raging epidemic, polluted water, sick people was everywhere. Mom, 
I want to go out and find a way to save our poor people. I can't bear huh? to see them suffer. That would be dangerous. I'm worried about you. Mom, I'll be careful, mm. so don't worry. Then you should go. I am very mm. proud to have such a smart, beautiful, honest daughter. But remember you have to wear a headscarf to hide this special hair, mm. or it will be dangerous for you. Anuki walked out and was heartbroken to see everyone was sick. Water! Give me some water, please! Anuki wanted to help, but the water was so polluted, she couldn't let people drink it. She sat down on a small stream, watching it and trying to touch the water. Strangely, when she touched it, the water became clear again. She brought the water back for everyone to drink. <laughs> After the villagers mm -hmm. drank her water, all diseases <laughs> disappeared. They joyfully worshipped her as their savior. Her miraculous magic reached the ears of the young king Menfisu. He went all the way to witness her saving everyone. Mm. I heard about your huh? talent. I have not had the opportunity huh? to meet mm. you for a long time. Huh? Thank you for taking care of this kingdom. <laughs> I have a proposal. Do you want to save the Egypt with me? Yes, of course. It is my honor, your majesty. <laughs> when their eyes met, the king hmm. immediately felt his heart skip hmm. a bit. A gust of wind, <laughs> as if unintentionally, <laughs> as if on purpose, made Anuki's scarf fall down and reveal her blonde hair that hmm. accentuated her beautiful appearance. <laughs> the king <gasps> immediately fell in love hmm. with that beauty. Anuki huh? felt embarrassed mm. and immediately put on her scarf. Together, they began their journey across Egypt to save the people. Wherever Anuki went, the water became clear. <laughs> In a short time, she had saved many people. <laughs> it's a miracle. What if you come with me to the Nile? Maybe you can bring the river back to how it used to be. <laughs> they quickly traveled to the Nile. Anuki sat down and gently touched the water. Suddenly, she felt very huh? familiar. The water seemed to wrap around her hand. Thanks to Anuki, the water of the Nile <laughs> gradually became clear again. But before the river could recover, she was suddenly blown away by an unknown force. <laughs> <laughs> you dare to mess around with me with such a weak power? Like I would let you do that. <laughs> Even the king who tried to protect Anuki got himself severely wounded by him. He approached her with killing huh? intent, but a faint light from the Nile flew up to cover her. The goddess of the Nile loomed. She hugged her and cried. Don't you dare harm my daughter. He cast a spell that made the Nile return to a dark color and then turned back to attack Anuki. That weak Anuki was quickly lifted up by him and thrown into the dark river. This dark water will drown you and next will be the goddess of the Nile. <laughs> the king huh? saw his loved one in trouble and jumped along and hugged her tightly under the fast water. The god of disease <laughs> laughed out loud because he thought he had eliminated her. But he did not expect that Anuki was a person with a purer soul than anyone. Her huh? purity purified the whole Nile. The water gently wrapped around her and lifted her up. A light enveloped Anuki. Huh? She suddenly transformed into a beautiful goddess with a rainbow-colored hair. 
The <laughs> Nile was purified and the power of the goddess of the Nile returned. The two of them defeated the god of deceit. Huh? Daughter, my dear, I thought I had lost you. The evil god tricked me and took you away since you were small. I thought I would never see you again. Anuki was also moved after hearing that. They hugged each other and cried with happiness. After defeating the god of disease, she and the goddess of the Nile performed the spell to make the crops return. <laughs> the water was as clear as before. She and King Menkisu also fell in love with each other. They quickly got married and they ruled Egypt peacefully and prosperously ever after.